Welcome back, construction crew, in OSHA 30 Study Guide, the ultimate source for exam preparation. Have you ever wondered how many workers suffer injuries each year due to improper materials handling? It's a staggering number, isn't it? Well, we are starting Module 9, Materials Handling, exploring the potential hazards, and learning how to mitigate them. Here is the recap of Module 8. What do you do, panic? or freeze vectors. These are sensitive to smoldering fires that produce a lot. There are four main classes of fires. Class A for Class C, dry chemical extinguishers. These are designed for electrical fire, wheezing, shortness of breath, and chest pain. If you've been exposed, store materials safely. All right. Let's ensure you're subscribed and hit that notification bell so you never miss a safety lesson. In this module, you will discover important information about hazards, prevention during handling, safe equipment operations, and the significance of ensuring a safe work environment for everyone involved. Let's get started with Chapter 1, Identifying Hazards. Every day, Workers across the country face the challenges of materials handling. From lifting heavy beams to operating powerful machinery, the risks are real and the consequences can be severe. In this chapter, we'll dive into the two primary hazards associated with materials handling, back and spinal injuries, and other physical injuries. Imagine lifting a heavy object without proper technique. The strain on your back can be immense. That's why it's crucial to understand the risks and take precautions. Back and spinal injuries are a common problem in the construction industry. The weight and awkwardness of materials can strain the muscles, ligaments, and discs in your back, leading to pain, discomfort, and even long-term damage. But it's not just your back that's at risk. Other physical injuries, such as strains, sprains, fractures, and bruises, can also occur from falling materials, being struck by objects, or improper handling of materials. It's a harsh reality, but accidents can happen. That's why it's essential to be aware of the potential hazards and take steps to prevent them. By following safe work procedures and using proper equipment, we can significantly reduce the risk of injuries. Remember, your safety is our top priority. Always prioritize your well-being and follow the guidelines we've discussed. Now, let's test your understanding. Take a moment to think about these questions and discuss them with your colleagues. Good work! Now we will explore Chapter 2, How We Can Safeguarding Workers During Material Handling. In this chapter, we'll discuss the importance of proper lifting techniques the use of mechanical aids, and the safe storage of materials. Let's discuss manual handling. When manually handling materials, it's essential to ask for help if a load is too heavy, bulky, or awkward to handle safely. This will help to prevent injuries and ensure that the job is done safely and efficiently. Now, what is proper lifting techniques? When lifting heavy objects, always use proper lifting techniques. Bend your knees, keep your back straight, and lift with your legs, not your back. Avoid twisting your body while lifting, and never attempt to lift more than you can safely handle. By following these guidelines, you can significantly reduce the strain on your back and prevent injuries. Let's discuss what is mechanical aids. In addition to proper lifting techniques, it's also important to use mechanical aids whenever possible. Cranes, forklifts, and other equipment can help to reduce the strain on workers and prevent injuries. However, it's essential to operate this equipment safely and according to manufacturer's instructions. Finally, safe storage of materials. Improperly stored materials can create hazards such as tripping hazards, falling objects, and fires. Ensure that materials are stored in a stable and organized manner, and follow all safety guidelines. Here are some specific guidelines for storing materials. Lumber. 
Stack lumber on level, solidly supported bracing, remove all nails before stacking. Bricks and masonry blocks. Stack bricks and masonry blocks in interlocking rows. Bags and bundles. Stack bags and bundles in interlocking rows, stepping back the layers and cross-keying at least every 10 bags high. Drums, barrels, and kegs. Store them symmetrically, block bottom tiers to prevent rolling. Use planks between stacked tiers. Secure bottom tiers if stacks are over two tiers. By following these guidelines, you can help to create a safer and more organized workplace. Now, let's test your understanding. Take a moment to think about these questions and discuss them with your colleagues. Now on to Chapter 3, Guidelines for Safe Equipment Operation. In this chapter, we'll delve into the safe operation of various equipment commonly used in materials handling. Let's start with conveyors. Conveyors can be a valuable tool in materials handling, but they can also pose significant risks if not operated properly. Here are some common hazards associated with conveyors. Hand injuries. For example, a worker's hand could get caught in the rollers or gears of a conveyor. Falling objects. Materials being transported on an overhead conveyor could fall and strike a worker below. Entrapment. A worker could become caught in the conveyor's machinery, leading to serious injuries. To prevent these hazards, always follow the manufacturer's instructions. Wear appropriate personal protective equipment. Be aware of your surroundings. And never attempt to clear jams while the conveyor is running. Now cranes, watch module 4 of cranes and rigging for a better understanding. For proper liftings, here are slings. They are used to lift and move heavy loads, it's essential to inspect slings before and during use to ensure they are in good condition. Employers must ensure that slings are visually inspected before and during use, look for signs of wear, damage, or defects, such as frayed fibers, cracks, or burns. Defective slings can fail under load, leading to serious accidents. If you notice any damage to a sling, take it out of service immediately and report it to your supervisor. Finally, what is powered industrial trucks, such as forklifts, are widely used in materials handling. It's essential to operate them safely and according to regulations. It must meet the design and construction requirements of the American National Standard for Powered Industrial Trucks, Part 2, ANSI V56.1-1969. New trucks must have identifying marks indicating that they have been inspected, always receive proper training before operating a powered industrial truck. This training should cover the equipment's controls, safety features, and proper operating procedures. Now, let's test your understanding. Take a moment to think about these questions and discuss them with your colleagues. Let's move to final chapter, Safe Work Environments. In our final chapter, we'll discuss the importance of creating safe work environments for materials handling. Aisles and passageways, they should be wide enough to allow for the safe movement of materials and equipment, avoid obstructing aisles and passageways with materials or equipment. Ergonomic safety, ergonomics plays a crucial role in preventing injuries and improving productivity. It teaches that jobs should be adapted to fit people rather than forcing people to fit jobs. The goal is to create work environments that are comfortable, efficient, and safe for workers. Training and education, proper training and education are essential for ensuring safe materials handling practices. That is it for Module 9. Today we've explored the various hazards associated with materials handling and learned how to mitigate them. Here is quiz link in the description to help you prepare for final exams. Do you have any questions? Leave them in the comments below and we'll be happy to help. Stay tuned for the next module, where we'll tackle a whole new set of safety challenges. Remember to like, 
comment, share, and subscribe to OSHA Outreach Courses.